Thank you so much for coming back for part three of Shelley's myringotomy and tympanostomy tube placement. In part one, we learned that Shelley was having some fluid buildup behind her eardrum, which actually affected her hearing. In part one, we also saw Dr. Fife make an incision or myringotomy to let some of the fluid out and suction it out during that episode. Then in part two, we saw him attempt to place the tympanostomy tube with great difficulty due to the scarring of Shelley's eardrum from childhood ear infections. Some of the manipulation inside of Shelley's ear caused her to have a vasovagal reaction where the nervous system reacts in a way that causes you to feel lightheaded and sweaty. Now we're going to see how Dr. Fye finishes putting in the tympanostomy tube. Cool. Ah. All right, here's what we're gonna do now. Will you hand me the myringotomy knife again? Just extend the incision just a little bit. And the suction again, please. And that same little pack. If this doesn't work, Crystal, if I'm having too much of a hard time, we might just go to a triune tube. Okay. Oops, sorry. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm feeling a little... Yeah, she felt I, I poked the side of her eardrum that I hadn't numbed yet. Is she lightheaded again? Sorry, when you said you're feeling it again, that's what you yeah, mean? Okay. Sorry. That's not, I don't apologize. I wish I was doing this better. You wouldn't yeah. have to do this. Yeah. How about what we'll do? Let's give you five or 10 minutes. Is that okay? Yeah. It's not a good feeling. You're like, no, my isn't. legs are like shaky. I started closing my eyes so that I can just like breathe through it. I can do this. Is it painful? Um, I wouldn't say painful. It's uncomfortable. But um, he like just tapped like a small little part that wasn't. So it was like kind of makes you jump a little. Mm -hmm. But it's just a lot of pressure. I just feel like really shaky. I can feel like him putting pressure on it and then just like sliding out. It's weird. I don't know if that's what it looks like on the movie or the screen, but 
and uh, some popping. More water. <laughs> Thanks. What makes it like your body shake? You get funny discharges of different neurotransmitters. And some of them are excitatory ones that make you more apt to move. And the threshold for a muscle to move is lower to the extent that it'll just kind of happen without really having a purposeful movement. There it is. Oh no. Popped right out. And it's in. Well, we made you earn that one for sure. You did great, honestly. So that inner little button will keep it in. The outer button keeps it from falling, falling inwards. And then over time, as, as skin and other stuff kind of exfoliate around it, the tube will just kind of fall out. OK? OK. That's it. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank you. Super easy, right? <laughs> it totally. only took three tries. <laughs> OK, three times Yeah, absolutely. So here's the thing is this shouldn't really be painful. OK. okay. I'll give you a couple little eardrops to use in your ears for a couple days. Um, and that mainly just kind of washes out any blood or any fluid. It's not infected, but that helps kind of settle all things down. Yes. You are safe to swim. You are safe to shower. There are really no restrictions using this, other than if you were to say, like, swim a few feet under the water in the pool or in a lake. Then okay. you might want to wear an earplug. Okay. okay. Uh, fluid should not accumulate as long as that tube is in place um, because it prevents that pressure from building up. And furthermore, if you get like an infection or something like that, yeah. it should dribble out of the, out of the ear and okay. we would treat it with ear drops. Okay. Now obviously we were doing this for you for more fluid than infection reasons, but if it happened, that's what we would do. Okay. Sound good? Yeah. Okay. Normal to hear popping and... Yes. Yeah. Okay. It'll take a little while getting used to. Some people even say that um, voices or sounds sound a little bit differently. Mm -hmm. um, it's not supposed to affect it much. And some of it's just getting used to the fact that all that fluid is gone. Yeah. But the ear little, uh, little tube does affect the way that the eardrum resonates and vibrates. And so usually people get used to that pretty quickly. Okay. But it's different for everybody. All right. Okay? Sound okay. good? Yeah. So we'll have her do some eardrops. And um, we'll look at it in a month, make sure things look good. It's okay. still in place. If you have any problems, you just give me a call. Really? Sound good? Thank you. Okay. Thanks. Hey, Dr. Fife, thank you so yeah, much for letting us come yeah. down to Absolutely. Sacramento ENT in Roseville and, yeah. and make a video of your uh, procedure with sure. Shelly. It's called a myringotomy? A myringotomy and a tube placement is what we did today. And yeah. tube placement. Uh -huh. And the purpose of that was to let this fluid drain out that she's had build up. Right. Any idea why the fluid started? So there's a lot of reasons why people develop uh, middle ear effusions. Uh, most commonly would be because of uh, eustachian tube dysfunction. And the eustachian tubes are the, the little tubes in the back of your nose that help equalize ear pressure behind your ear. That's the reason why when you drive up to Tahoe or go on a plane flight, you have to yawn or swallow to get those things to open up. Okay. Occasionally in some patients that, that ability for that tube to open doesn't quite work well and that's allergies, inflammation from a cold or, or um, even just a, not rebounding from, from a change in altitude. And when that happens you can actually develop a, a negative pressure or a little bit of a vacuum behind the eardrum which then weeps fluid or pulls fluid out from the tissues that surround mm -hmm. that middle ear space. And In most patients that will go away in about four weeks in some patients that persists, and for a lot of people it's really annoying to not be able to hear anything out of the yeah. one ear. And so for patients who have that problem, we can, we can aspirate the fluid out by making a small incision in the eardrum, sucking the fluid out, and 
If we're worried about the eardrum healing and then the fluid reaccumulating, we'll put a small little temporary tube in the ear, and okay. that can make a big difference. Now, in Shelley's particular case, we saw that you can get a little vasovagal discharge yes. <laughs> yeah. with manipulation of the eardrum. Right, and then, I mean, that can happen with any sort of medical procedure, whether yes, you're having blood absolutely. drawn or, or anything. And, and it's very, very common. It, it uh, frequently happens when someone's a little dehydrated, a little nervous, or you have an empty stomach coming into it. Yeah. But uh, usually they're very temporary, and Shelley did absolutely good job <laughs> dealing with that. So great job there. Did you want to put out any uh, web address or Twitter or anything that you want people to be well, able to So we have you? our own website, Sacramento ENT, sacent.com. And certainly we have some uh, information about those procedures as well as some of the other procedures we do if people are interested in seeing that. But Excellent. Thank you so much yeah, for letting it's a pleasure. us pleasure. <laughs> thank you for taking care of yeah. Shelly. Appreciate it. I'm glad to do it. Shelly, I should point out that these people will be commenting in the video support for you. Yeah. So are you going to read the comments? Okay, so sure. Shelly will read the comments. Wish her well as she recovers. Hey, thanks for joining us. We also want to give a shout out to our patrons. Which one? Boo Boo Kitty. <laughs> Boo Boo Kitty and Lindsay Antwine, Petra Rosenberg, and our latest Meg Lightbone. Thank you, ladies, for being a part of the Patreon. And you guys are able to have your name in because that's what the level that you're at on Patreon. If you're interested in that, go ahead and check out patreon.com slash medical group. Until next time, Dr. Fife, who's just coming in the door. Shelly and myself telling all of you to stay in good health. <laughs>